friends, I'm Bianca Renee, and you're watching Bianca Renee today. And today, I have a special guest, MJ Acosta. I feel like you have to say your last name like that. Acosta. A little flair, I you like know, it. A little flair. Has to go with their <laughs> Afro-Latina shirt. Spoiler alert, we're going to be talking about the Afro-Latina community, curls in the Afro-Latina community, and she also is a news anchor, correct? For a what sportscaster. Sportscaster. For the NFL Network. Yeah, so she's rocking her curls on television, which is not something we see often. And she was also one of the judges for Miss Teen USA, who is also curly. So we have a lot of fun things to talk about. But let's start off with your background and growing up Afro-Latina. What is your yes. ethnicity? So my parents are both from the Dominican Republic. Okay. And um, in the Dominican Republic, it could be 105 degrees, and it often is. And every Sunday, the ritual was roller set your hair, flatten on out. Wow. So it was a That's really common, just like in the culture? Just, always? just in the culture. It's always press your hair, relax your hair, keep it straight. You know, it, the more European, the, the more white you look, yeah. um, that was equ equated more with like status and even beauty. And that was kind of like the beauty standard yeah. um, growing up. If your hair was nice and straight, the flatter the better, um, then they considered you ready to go. Otherwise, if you're rocking your curls, I mean, my grandma, you know, it's the day she died, was like, you didn't brush your hair today? <laughs> it wasn't out of malice. It was just what the culture was is what they were used to. So how long were you straightening your hair and going through that process before you went natural? Um, up until about a year and a half ago. Oh, really? Yes. Recent. Crazy? recent. Very recent. Look how bomber curls look for it's only crazy. being a year-ish natural. It was like an accelerated process to yeah, like grow it, it out. These are amazing. It was nuts. Um, before I started just wearing it completely curly, I did stop uh, chemically straightening it. So I grew out all of that relaxer, all of that fried and hair. a year? Uh, no, that took several years. Oh, okay. Uh, that took like two and a half, three years and like trimming. My hair was already short because it was full ride. Completely yeah. done. So I... Was probably right under my ears and just destroyed. And but I big chop or transition? Uh, transitioned a little bit, a little but bit. I, I chopped it pretty short, um, kind of like in a bob. Once mm -hmm. I did um, decide to wear it curly, but it took a long time. Yeah. <laughs> well, I get a lot of messages from multiple different cultures, honestly, for whether it's Indian, Egyptian, Black, Latino, mm -hmm. about girls that dealing with this fight with their parents because yeah. like you said like the parents wanted to be straight because of how they were raised or maybe the culture yeah. how did you deal with that like with your parents and what advice would you give to someone that's like really right. wants to go natural but like their parents just won't let them yeah i mean and i was super grown by the time yeah <laughs> you know sure. i'm it, midway through my 30s so you didn't even just fight just, it as a kid i didn't even <laughs> fight it. as a kid it just was what it was right yeah. like you, you sat there and and your mom either hot combed your hair or was flat ironing your hair or all of the above. Yeah. Um, and it just was what it was. I didn't even think like, oh, it's okay to wear my hair curly. Right. Um, unless I was at the beach or, you know, it was a very like off sort of moment. Yeah. Um, and it, it was tough. It was really tough because I didn't know like, hey, it's okay to wear your hair like this. I was yeah. just like, I have to, you know, put my roller set on today and sit <laughs> under this dryer for two hours and then blow dry it some more. Um, that just, it was ritual every single week. My mom was a little more understanding about it because she's a woman, so she gets it. And yeah. she's like, you're, you're free, my child. You're liberated. <laughs> my dad, on the other hand, was like, oh, how long are we, uh, really? how long are we doing this? Yeah, he's like, you look beautiful. Don't I think the dad, like, wouldn't care because right. of the dads, but that's interesting. Not at all. Well, he was concerned more so for my professional career. He's like, oh, how okay. is this going to trans? I was already, you know, I've been working in, in broadcasting for 10 years now. Mm -hmm. So he's like, how is this going to work? Like, are your yeah. bosses going to be okay? Like, is this acceptable? And I was like, yeah. quite frankly, I'm not sure. Yeah. We have, I have never really tried. And how crazy really is that? Done. Like, is the hair you were born with acceptable yes. for television? What, that's going to be watched by regular, normal people. Yeah. How was that transition? Like, did you start off with straight hair on air and yeah. then you end up going curl? Okay, so how was that transition? So it's so funny because I would straighten my hair just to curl it again, right? <laughs> That's the crazy part. You know, <laughs> curling irons all over the place and it's yeah. like, why? My hair's already Comment curled. below if you can relate. <laughs> For reals, I bet you everybody can. Um, especially in local news, like if you look at most newscasters on a regular, you know, five o'clock news, you yeah. turn it on and everyone kind of fits the same mold. And mm -hmm. the theology behind that is that, you know, it's not about you. You don't want to distract from the stories. And I get that, but I, I don't think that should be at the consequence of who you are yeah. and, and the way you were born. Yeah. Um, I agree. 
And moreover, like who says that curly hair can't be professional? Yeah. I'm so done with that yeah. narrative. <laughs> and that was one of the biggest pushes to why I decided, all right, I'm just going to wear it like this all the time. So tell us about your first day when you walked in and like, okay, I'm just going to go with right. my curly hair. First of all, it wasn't curly like this. It was like a, <laughs> yeah, because it was so damaged at that point. And I was still like, you know, up here in my, in my bangs, I was like curling it with a curling iron because it was just so damaged. It wouldn't even take a shape. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it was coming off of a weekend where I, I let my hair breathe. I tried to do that every so often. And um, it was kind of a crazy schedule that day. I was running. I had to go to a practice in the morning for, in, at the time, in San Diego. Mm -hmm. um, and then haul back to the station and, like, put my show together, produce it, um, write it, edit the highlights. And I was like, I'm not going to have time to do my hair yeah. before this. And I was <laughs> Things like, we have to think about. <laughs> I mean, you got to calculate, like, a full day before. Yeah. Um, and I said, you know what? whatever I'm here let me just like zhuzh it up in the front and like see what happens and the response was overwhelmingly positive my from coworkers, your coworkers yeah. like from people that are watching too. both nice. so my coworkers immediate response right because they're right in front of me they're like yeah. girl my god your hair looks amazing I didn't even know you had curly hair and I was like I just thought it was straight okay let's have the conversation okay <laughs> We got but, that from that. Well, how else would they know, right? Yeah. If you're going in there every day with it flat ironed. Yeah. So, um, Surprise! Yeah, I was like, <laughs> oh. And then they were like, you should wear it like that more often. And I was like, maybe I'll do it tomorrow. Oh. And so I went the next day and the next day and the next day. Um, and eventually my boss was like, oh, okay, so are we doing this? <laughs> or, um, and it wasn't, you know, to, to their credit at that, I was in San Diego at the time. They were very open to it. They're yeah. like, if you, if you want to keep it this way, like we'll take new headshots for you. Like the whole thing. And nice. I was not expecting that whatsoever that's I'm great. so relieved yeah and a lot of jobs too. aren't like that just even normal corporate jobs I've had people write me saying that their boss is literally like threatening them, like you have to fix your hair or you can't come into work tomorrow right. like but luckily we have that new law is that just yes, in New the York Crown in Act. California or well the Crown Act is now here in California and, yes. they're and it's been passed by the Senate so now it goes to the governor where they're really trying to push to make it a law where they cannot discriminate against anyone based on their hair or yes. their style and it's also for schools too, right? Yes, and in school yeah. students. Major. So, Huge. I mean, the fact that we even need a law that allows us to wear our hair the way it's grown. Like, I it's don't get just it. crazy. Yeah. But I'm happy to have it, Me I too. guess. But, um, you know, one step forward. <laughs> yes, little baby steps, but we'll take them. And we'll also take that step and that crown. If you guys watch Miss Teen USA, she was one of the judges. And she actually wrote me, like, before the show, like, just want to let you know. There's some curly <laughs> girls in the competition. I was already excited. And then the fact that she won with her natural hair, like, you know that all of the girls in the pageant, I mean, majority probably had straight hair or they at least had that thought or conversation of, sure. should I straighten it for this to look like the rest of the girls? Is it too big? Are the judges yeah. going to like it? Like, that probably had to be a thought process. You interviewed her, yes. though, right? So what did she say when you asked her? I'm sure you asked her about her. That was the first question <laughs> out the gate. She walked in and out. First of all, she's stunning and so poised and so confident. So she catch, Kaylee, she yeah. catches your attention the second she walks in the room. But the very first um, round of the competition is the interview. This okay. is the part nobody sees. It's not televised. It's just a panel interview in front of the judges, which is intimidating if yeah. you can imagine being 17 standing in front of judges mm -hmm. all the girls were incredible but she walked in and having competed in pageants myself i knew how difficult that decision must have been for her yeah. to say i'm gonna own this i'm gonna go in there and some you girls can't even decide that for like prom and home I mean, let alone like yes. televised so she show. just walked in beaming and i was like yes curls and that was the first question i said to her i was a curly girl a curly girl <laughs> why did you choose to compete in all your curly glory. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, she explained to all of us, to the panel at that point, that she's mixed. Her mother is white, her father is black. And so her whole life, she was trying to emulate her mom, you know, and her mom didn't know about curly hair, but like yeah. tried to help her as much as she could. Mm -hmm. um, and then that actually, that relationship with her mother, her mom was like, you know, you're just, you don't need to do anything. You're so beautiful just as you are. And she started to embrace it more and more as she got older. And mm -hmm. she walked in there and it was like, and they were so healthy and I moisturized. <laughs> if you go to her Instagram, I saw like her earlier pictures. She did have straight hair. So I'm like, there was yep. some type of transition that there happened was. between these photos. Totally. <laughs> and it wasn't even like, one, it was curly, but also wasn't like long curls or like no. wavy curls, like the more quote unquote acceptable curls. Right. It looked like she could have just came off of a big chop mm -hmm. and she wore them short. I, I assumed <laughs> that she did. And she told me, yeah, it wasn't that long ago that, that you know, I yeah. cut it off and, and, and really started embracing them. So, like, for me, of course, I'm empathizing with this as a curly girl and having been there, but there's a panel of judges, and yeah. we're not allowed to talk to each other. Oh. We're not allowed to influence one another. Like, 
you have your opinion, you write on your sheet, they collect them, they audit it. It's very, I can't be like, Bianca, like, yeah. <laughs> Connecticut, right? Like, she's like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you cannot do that. So I had no idea if the judges would see what I saw in her, which was not just about her curls, but about who she was as a person, how yeah. brave she was, and how confident she was in who she was. Yeah. She's she wrote so me sweet. saying that she actually watches my channel. Yes. So I was like, ah! Oh! I was honest. We talked about you. Yes. <laughs> I was oh, like, really? yes. I was like, okay, so are you following curly blockers? I'll tag you. She's like, well, I follow Bianca Renee. I was like, girl, really? Me too. Oh, yes. I'm so honored. she already knew. So yeah. I wrote her and I was like, hey, you should totally come on my channel. Yeah. I know she's doing her whole like circuit right now, yeah. but spoiler alert, guys, I'm really trying to get her on my channel. Comment yeah. below if you want her here. Tag her on her Instagram. Let her know you want her on Bianca Renee today. Yeah. So that happened. And then a little bit later, Miss USA, also curly. What was her nationality? Do you know? Chesley, she's mixed as well, I believe. Uh, white and black. Black and white? Yeah. Wow. So yeah. we had two curly wins, and then... Then Miss America is a, a black woman. Yeah. So it was all... Unprecedented. Black girl magic all the way around. We had two naturals. Like, it was just... Shook it. Yeah. Shook it. A moment. We were out yeah. here winning. Okay? <laughs> Taking over. They don't even know. Well, and that was the big thing with Teen USA and Miss USA where, and it sucks that this is how even we think. I was like, there's no way that Chesley are now yeah. Miss I was like, there's no way she's gonna win. We already have one yeah. curly girl. Like, they're not gonna pick two. Like, yeah. why can't there be more than one? Yeah. Why? And we all, why? We're the ones that think that. Yeah, so. well, because we've been, you know, kind of programmed, even yeah. subconsciously, not so subtly, um, you know, by, by what we live out every single day. You're the token black girl, the token curly and that's girl, it. and then that's enough. And that's enough. <laughs> uh, thank you. Yeah. You guys have had your moment. So I, I, like, broke down in tears watching it. I was like, <laughs> yeah out of here <laughs> so not only is mj the curly girl on tv she's also in the sports world so being a woman talking about sports is another bear that she is crossing how is it in the sports world and do you ever talk about curls with like the athletes or anything <laughs> one of the interesting parts of my job is having to go into nfl locker rooms and talk to these guys during media availability mm -hmm. And Where you go in the locker room? Yes, oh. in the locker room. That's when you know. That's when the guys are kind of available to speak to the media, and we can just go and and, and chat either on camera or off. Uh, but it's about like building the relationships with these guys that I'm covering on on a week to week basis. Um, so so many times you'll see so many of these athletes, and they'll have like a diva curl um, bottle in there, or can too, or she in, in the locker. In the locker. That's amazing. And not just as well, like a tub, right? So I'll walk in and like. I'll, I'll mention it. Yes, icebreaker. <laughs> yeah. Totally. So I'll ask, like, okay, I see you rocking the fro over there. And they're like, yo, I was about to ask you, like, what products are you using? And then it's a full on product conversation in the middle of an NFL locker room. And it's wow. fantastic. We've traded products before on occasion. Philip Lindsay, I gave him a little tiny bottle of product once. I was like, I'm going to help you out, bro. Like, See, that's what I us curly you. people do. We help you out in the aisles at Walmart or Always. in the locker room during the game. Yes. <laughs> and this was at uh, right before NFL Honors. It was like the big award show at the end of the season. Um, and he had the red carpet the next day. So as he's passing by the red carpet, he's like, did I do good? Did oh, I do okay? Oh, snaps. You did that. Amazing. <laughs> he did so great. I was like, make sure your hair is soaking wet when you apply the product. He's like, all right, all right. I mean, you know, guys, with, with grooming, it's a little yeah. different. But he did such a great job. I was like, I see the moisture. I see the bounce. <laughs> I was so proud. I um, bet. I mean, surprisingly, my male videos, which is like six or seven videos, way outnumber the views in my girl videos. I really should yeah. do more for men because there's one, there's not as many guy curly vloggers. Right. I guess it's not as saturated. Right. But like guys don't really know what to do, but I don't know what else you guys want to do. If, you are, if you're a guy watching, please comment and let me know what your videos you guys yeah. want. But like my curl sponge video got like four million views. Wow. I think, yeah. yeah, I believe it, man. <laughs> so I'm like, yeah, I need to get back on uh, videos for the guys and you know, how to apply it, soaking wet hair. Yes, yeah, the whole night. They want to know too. Even my boyfriend, who has curly hair, but most of the time wears it like in a fade. <laughs> when he does that, I grow out. I'm like, I'm running a little low on product. <laughs> it's running out quicker than usual. And it's because he's using my product. Yeah. He's like, I don't want sulfates in my hair either, oh. babe. I'm like, well, I mean, wow. you gotta respect that. <laughs> I do. I can't even. Be, that's the thing. I can't even be mad about it. So like. Dudes out there are holding it down. They want to know they're part of this curly community too, even professional athletes. So yeah. that, you know, it just reminds us that they're, they're people too. They're athletes. They're just like us. Yeah. <laughs> if you guys have any more comments or any questions, or if you also can relate to the story of maybe being the token curly girl at your school, being Afro Latina, growing up with a mom or dad that might not want it or think it's better to straighten your hair. Let's start the conversation below and make sure you also follow MJ on Instagram, which is MJ Acosta. TV. 
And when time. can they watch you on TV? When can they tune in? Man, <laughs> we're kind of, we're on all the time on NFL Network. The season doesn't stop just because games aren't going on. So, I mean, follow my Instagram and I'll, I'll let yeah. you know when I'm about to be on. <laughs> if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe. I post two new videos every week, once on Friday and once on Sunday. And you can follow me on Instagram at Ms. Bianca Renee. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching Bianca Renee today.